Brian Daniel. This is my airplane. Uh, this is called a Breezy. It uh, was built uh, by Sam Bleeden out at Dillingham, Dillingham Airfield. He owned the glider company. So it uses a glider wing and uh, other parts from aircraft are the Cessna nose wheel and the rudder pedals came from a Cessna. Gas tank I bought from a racing car company. Um, I do use this plane and I fly it every chance I get. After work or on weekends, I'm usually out at uh, Kale Loa, which is Barber's Point, uh, flying this air airplane. Uh, mostly around Oahu, but I have taken it to the outer islands. Only in very, very good weather. It has to be dead calm, no rain. Uh, last two weeks ago, we took this plane uh, on a trip to uh, Lanai landed at Lanai City and then flew around the island and came back to Oahu. That was a nice trip. Uh, this is the way to see the islands uh, you, because in an airliner you, you're in a metal tube and you're looking out a little window from 35,000 feet and you just don't see much. I believe that they should make airliners like this where everybody sits outside and they fly low and slow. That would be a ride. Well, first of all, uh, I'm Neil Darnell, and I'm with the, uh, I represent the Air National Guard. We're here in Hawaii, uh, courtesy of the Air National Guard. We're here to perform at the show this weekend, the Kanahoe Bay uh, Air Show. We're excited about it. We flew the truck over on a C-5 a couple of days ago, uh, compliments of the uh, U.S. Air Force. And we're glad to be here. We're a long way from home. We're from Missouri. Uh, we travel uh, all over the mainland. This is our first time to have our truck on a on an Air Force jet, so we're uh, we're excited about it. Basically, what we've got here is a uh, jet-powered pickup. It's the fastest truck in the world. Uh, we uh, we hold the air show speed record of 375 miles per hour. Uh, the uh, and we'll run that fast this weekend on your runway. Uh, we uh, will we'll do two performances each day. The first one is a solo, kind of a teaser. Uh, the second one will, act, will actually uh, race an airplane. I give the airplane uh, uh, 160 mile an hour head start. Uh, I don't leave until I see him in my windshield, and then it's uh, catch up. And I, uh, I'll have to get it up to about 375 to catch him. So it's a pretty cool deal. The truck has a, a military jet engine on it that came from a Navy uh, jet trainer. Uh, we added an afterburner. It makes 12,000 horsepower and 7,000 pounds of thrust. The truck only weighs 2,400 pounds. If you were to set it up on its, uh, on its backside, uh, it would go straight up, no problem. Well, I'm old enough to know better. Uh, we, I've, I've got quite a background as far as I've, I've raced a little bit of everything. But uh, we've, this is our 10th year uh, doing, the, doing the truck. Uh, actually, uh, two years ago, we, uh, we partnered with the Air National Guard at that point, we added another jet truck. My 30-year-old son drives uh, drives that truck. Actually, he's in uh, he's at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita, Kansas, this weekend. So, so it's kind of a family operation. We're uh, we're having a ball. Well, we can burn we can burn any kind of uh, jet fuel, kerosene, uh, soybean oil, uh, or uh, diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is our preference because. Uh, because it makes more smoke and fire, and that's what basically the jet trucks are all about. Diesel fuel has more BTUs, and uh, and it uh, seems to like the diesel a little bit better than everything else. And it burns a lot of it. We'll burn 60 gallons uh, in a in a uh, about an eight-minute performance. This is my uh, third or fourth time to Hawaii as a tourist, uh, as an air show performer. This is the first time. This is the first time the truck has actually ever been out of the uh, uh, out of North America, the continent. Uh, we uh, we did do the Alaska show. We drove up there uh, with a trailer uh, back in 2006. But uh, I was asked about a year ago if I'd be interested in coming to this show, and and uh, they kind of gave me uh, a little bit of the rundown what all was going to be involved. Uh, it, it has been a it's definitely been a journey. We uh, we hauled the truck to Travis Air Force Base uh, in uh, California in a trailer, and at that point, then we loaded it on a C-5 Galaxy, and uh, we got here uh, Tuesday night late, and uh, 
we're still uh, I'm still trying to catch up uh, my body to uh, to what time it is here we're six hours different from home but I want to I want to invite everybody to come on out and see the show uh, the, uh, the the entire air show is going to be fantastic they've got a lot going on here of course it all starts with the Blue Angels uh, uh, as the finale of the of the show but got a lot of aerobatic good aerobatic performers here several different things uh, that they're gonna see I mean it's a it's a world-class air show there's no doubt about it and uh, for the first time ever here in a way you've got a jet fired truck so a lot of people are excited about it and we're excited to be here Fantastic. Really? Yeah. Did you get sick? No, Did no, you no. Feel sick? 
Yes. What was the best part of it? <laughs> um, I really liked the hammerhead. That was a maneuver that the uh, pilot did. So you go straight up. Yep. And we went up above the Mokaluas and we came straight down on top of the Mokaluas. So you went cruising down Kailua Beach. We, we did, and uh, most of our maneuvering was right off of Bellows Beach. Bellows, and, uh, okay. We, we, we got lucky and timed our hammerhead. Uh, a new way to see the Mokes, going straight down at them. I guess so. It's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we did roll, loop. loop. We did roll. Oh, loop, yeah, I'm going to tell everybody about it. Yeah, you did a roll? Coming out to the air oh, show. we did roll, loop, uh, half Cuban eight. Uh, oh, what else did uh, we do? Torque roll. Uh, Torque roll was smiling. going straight up, just uh, <laughs> corkscrews all the way to zero airspeed. And uh, she did a fantastic job. Very good. He's an awesome pilot. I Very so. smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So, how long have you been yeah, doing this? Well, I've had this plane for 16 years, and I've been flying for uh, 47 years. Uh, I was an Air National Guard uh, fighter pilot for uh, about 30 plus years. And where are you based out of? Honolulu uh, International Airport. Oh, okay. I mean, so you're airport. local. Yeah, sure. Local, local pilot. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We've lived here 43 years 43 now. Years. In fact, we're both from Kailua, so, yeah. so we did that some sightseeing and, and saw our houses on the way to and from. Uh, so, so do you do other air shows as well? Uh, there was one in Kona a uh, year before last, and the 4th of July in Kailua. Uh, we always, uh, Hank Breckner and, and the Captain and I always do uh, uh, our show on the 4th of July. It's a twilight show at about 6 o'clock at night. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you. you. Well, thanks, Alina. Yes, you did a great you. job. <laughs> Jackie Warda, Jackie B, J-A-C-Q-U-I-E-W-A-R-D-A. -E I'm an aerobatic pilot extraordinaire. And of course, I'm a girl. And you're a girl. And I'm a girl. And, and why do you say that, you're a girl? Because it's important, because I'm one of about four in this entire industry across the country. It's all, it's a guy's thing. It's, a, it's, the, it's the old bastion. 
and it's difficult to, to work your way in, but once you're in, you're in. And what made you want to get in? Well, I just wanted to fly. And it took me a long time to realize that I was smart enough to learn to fly an airplane because I didn't think girls could fly airplanes because I didn't think girls were smart enough. Well, I found that that was not true. Not only am I smart enough, but I'm extremely capable. And I learned that, and I just thought, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So when did you start flying? Legally with a license at 32. <laughs> I flew, I was the consummate fence hanger. Any chance I got to fly with someone, I would. But I actually got my license when I was 32 years old and just been flying one hour at a time since then. I'm flying the German-built Extra 300. It's built by Walter Extra. It's uh, putting out about 350 horsepower. It has two seats, so I actually can take passengers now, which is a little unusual for the air show industry. Obviously, smaller is easier to throw it around the sky, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I like having the second seat. It's built to fly aerobatics. It'll fly, it'll create lift in any position I put it, upside down, sideways, upside down, whatever. And it's, it's, it's actually designed to do aerobatics. That's its number one job. Oh, we put it in a C5. The C5 Galaxy, we had to take the propeller off and we took the entire tail section off and then you turn it kind of sideways and slide it up inside that aircraft. We brought four airplanes and the jet truck. Well, anybody who sees me fly this airplane, I just turned 59 years old. I flew my first air show when I was 50. So if I can do that, it doesn't matter what anybody wants to do out there. I don't care how old you are or whatever it is you want to do. If you want it badly enough, Anything's possible. I've proven that more than once. I think that people who want to learn to fly, if they've never flown, they need to go to an airport right now, take an introductory flight to see if they actually like it. There's no reason to wait till tomorrow or next week. They go right now. Because if you don't like it, now you know you can start dreaming about something else. But if you want to learn to fly, find an airport, go take a flight, they're going to let you fly it from the very first time. Find out if you love it as much as you think you do. Because if you do, now you've started. That's the hard part, is getting the first flight in. Once you start and you realize you love it as much as you thought you did, you're, you're halfway there because you have now started. So I would encourage anyone to just go try it. I want everybody on this island and every other island to come out and see this air show this weekend. I'm going to be flying down low in front of the crowd and I'm going to tumble the airplane, I'm going to dive at the ground, I'm going to miss the ground, come back up and do it again, back and forth. We're all going to do that. You've got the Blue Angels here, we've got Kirby Chambliss. I'm going to fly. I'm the only girl out here flying, so I think if nothing else, come out and see how I do it. I'm just thrilled to death to be in Hawaii flying an air show. I just think it's pretty awesome that I get to do something this special, to ride the C5. I mean, it's just not your everyday average air show. It's, yeah, I feel very privileged to be here. And I'm honored that they wanted, this is my second time they asked me to come back. So that's a pretty nice honor.
You know, I'm, 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 I always consider myself very fortunate because at two years old, there's pictures of me dragging airplanes around. So I always knew I wanted to be a pilot. And that's why I consider myself fortunate because a lot of people are not sure what they want to do. I knew I wanted to be a pilot. All I had to do was figure out a way to do it. And so I've been flying with my dad when I was probably as young as uh, 10 or 11 years old and then got my license 18, 19 years old and been flying ever since. I've been flying air shows really since I was about 24 years old. And I'm 26 now, so I just have to say, just a year I've been ago. flying, yeah, I've, I've done a lot. I've done a lot of them for sure. So uh, this is an Edge 540. Uh, this was our 2010 race plane that we converted to an air show airplane. It's very lightweight, very strong. Uh, I've been involved with the manufacturer since day one. I did all the test flying on the airplane, all the thing with the flutter analysis on the ailerons and the cantilever tail and all the things we switched over to. Uh, the rate of roll on it is super fast. It's almost 500 degrees a second, which is one and a half times. And to put that in perspective, like the F-18, it's 240. This is 500. Well, the, the thing about this airplane that's special is that, you know, it, you basically your imagination is a limitation. I mean, if it, if you can't do it in this airplane, it pretty much can't be done. Uh, and basically, it can, you know, as you see out here today, the tail will go over the nose and make it do that many times. Uh, cartwheel it, do pretty much anything that I want to do with the airplane. It's a fantastic airplane. Oh, I love being away. I was able to come over a few days early and enjoy, you know, some of the attractions and stuff here. My family's here. Went to Pearl Harbor. Went to a, a late night luau, which was really cool. Uh, all that. So uh, I've had a great time, and uh, I'm I'm really enjoying myself. But I guess now it's time to go to work.
My name is Major Tom Gallagher, the United States Air Force Reserve. I'm standing in front of the C-5 Galaxy. We're based out of Westover, Massachusetts. We fly Air Force Reserve. This aircraft is predominantly for uh, cargo lift missions. We're able to carry up to two M1 Abram tanks or eight Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, we travel all across the world. We do missions in support of uh, Operation Iraq or Afghanistan, Enduring Freedom. Um, we're out here today with the uh, air show support. We actually brought some performers from uh, Travis Air Force Base en route. We got to enjoy the air show ourselves. We brought uh, Jackie Pete, his aircraft and performer, and we brought the uh, Red Bull aircraft as well as the uh, Red Bull jet truck. So we're happy to be here and uh, Jordan White. My name is uh, Captain Marconi Cabatbet. I go by a Bullet. Behind us here is the F-22 Raptor. Uh, it is a premier air dominance uh, fighter that we have in the United States aircraft uh, today. Uh, what makes this aircraft special uh, is uh, it is basically the best aircraft uh, out there. Uh, it has stealth capability as well as uh, internal base as you can see. So this aircraft uh, outmatches any fighter that's out there in the arsenal and our adversaries and uh, everybody would be uh, pretty afraid to challenge us. So once again, uh, Air Force and the United States spent a lot of money uh, creating this aircraft uh, to be the air dominance and supreme air dominance fighter uh, today. So this aircraft uh, costs off the line uh, about 140 to 160 million dollars. Uh, there's a lot of money being poured in, which uh, drives up uh, the price a lot more. This is due to the advanced avionics systems that we have that allows us to have a lot of essay, situational awareness uh, that allows a pilot like me to make uh, tactical decisions uh, that makes us win the war and makes us that air dominance uh, training. For training, as in the pilot wise, we all go through uh, UPT, undergraduate pilot training, and that takes about a year as well as some fighter training and then off to your uh, MDSs which is F-22. Basically all in all, it takes about uh, two and a half years to three years to get all done. Full up training from starting uh, from a guy that does not know how to fly to an Air Force pilot that is equipped and uh, ready with the knowledge that you can to uh, fly this F-22 aircraft. Uh, but about two and a half to three years. We're out here from San Diego. I'm the team chief for uh, the Navy Parachute Team. We we just we come around and promote you know awareness and naval special warfare, SEAL, SWIC, EOD, and the main point is just to come out and jump and uh, interact with you know the public and actually see you know SEALs close up and, and ask us questions. We're just normal people, just like everybody else. You know, it's 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 very simple. Work hard. You know, whatever you put your mind to, you're going to do it. Whether you know you become a SEAL or you know anything special in in, in life, uh, you know, if it's if it's what you want to do and you want to be one of us and you want to volunteer for that, it's it's hard work. Simple that, and you know, and never quit attitude. But really, that that's across the military wide. You know, the Marines, Marines, sailors, Air Force, everybody. It's just it's that attitude that's going to put you in this position. You know, training is. I'm sure anybody can tell you. You want you can't always prepare for every single thing. I mean, just like today, the winds were nasty up there, and you know we practiced a lot, but we've never practiced here. So it's you still have to be prepared for unknown. So I kind of like having some of that on uh, we, we jump uh, you know six to nine times when we're doing our training during uh, during the winter is really like our off time when we're not doing air shows and Navy weeks and stuff like that so you know as seals we try to jump as much as possible on the parachute team we jump a heck of a lot more uh, I think definitely you know discipline um, I'm sure you've heard this many times, but it's definitely discipline. Uh, it's integrity. You know, it's doing the right thing when nobody else is looking. And really, that plays big time into our community. 
because I'm carrying the load for you and you've been carrying the load for me. And once you go overseas, you don't have family to go home to. So when we're out training, I think we take our training very, very seriously because once we go overseas, like I said, you are my family if you and I are both SEALs. So that is a, that's a big difference. And I think uh, for our newer SEALs, when they come into their first deployment, that's probably the biggest eye opener. So I think that discipline and that reliance on another man is, is, uh, is definite. I think that's probably what I've taken, taken about it so far. Uh, I've been at SEAL Team 5, SEAL Team 7, uh, and then you know, I've, I've trained our, our guys doing land warfare, so I've been to you know, quite a few, t you know, a couple of teams. I've been on the East Coast for a little bit, so yes. Yeah, I mean, like you know, everything's out on the internet now. now it's too much, you know. Uh, we, and, and that's one thing that you know seals you know we take very very much pride in our, our secretive type work but there's so much publicity right now it's hard for us to not be in the, the spotlight Hi, my uh, name's Lance Coble Rimmer. Um, I'm here to explain to you guys about the uh, M327 120 uh, millimeter uh, mortar system. So uh, this is the Marine Corps' uh, new. It's uh, fairly new. It's the uh, shoots a 120 millimeter mortar round, which is this right here. So it's going to shoot this. It's going to be front loaded. So somebody's going to stand up here on this stool, front load this. Max range on it is roughly 7,900 meters. Um, it's going to be pulled by by uh, an ITV, an internally transportable vehicle. Basically, the whole weapon system was created so it could be loaded in and out of CH-53s and 22 Ospreys. So both the mortar and the vehicle can be loaded onto a bird at the same time. Um, so that's its basic use: is to come out of a helicopter, come into a combat zone, fire, and then go back onto the helicopter and get out. So that's his basic use. Good morning, uh, my name is Corporal Ochoa, Force Battalion 12th Marines Charlie Battery. I was Section Chief on M777 Howitzer. Uh, it's basically the lightweight howitzer for artillery. Uh, you can shoot up to 18 miles. Um, you can shoot up to four rounds per minute, So and then two rounds every minute following that. So basically, you have a crew of uh, seven guys, six guys on the gun, and myself, Section Chief. Uh, verifying and making sure everything's uh, double and triple check before you shoot every round. I'm Lance Cooper Taylor with 1st Battalion, 12th Marines, Charlie Battery. Uh, this is the M250 Cal. Uh, basically, we just use this on post or put it in the back of the 7 ton on the, the uh, turret. And uh, the max range, max effective range is 1,850 meters. And uh, that's an area target. So, area target is basically just uh, 1,850 meters, a, a truck. Um, uh, we use this on post just to shoot on, uh, over flat ground. This right here is the 240 Bravo. Um, uh, it shoots a 7.62 ball round. Um, also it has a uh, armor piercing round that goes with it too. Um, max range is 1800 meters. Uh, area, tar area target 800 meters of point target. A point target is for personnel, smaller targets. Uh, this is the machine gun day optic. All right, um, we just started implementing these uh, in the Marine Corps, and you can actually uh, range somebody out of this this day optic. Uh, there's a uh, reflex sight here. It's just at 100 meters. It'll shoot a one inch uh, target. We are stationed out of Pensacola, Florida. I tell you what, you think Pensacola is beautiful until you come here, so thank you all for rubbing that in and making me not want to live in Florida anymore. Uh, but at the same time, we do our show season 
basically from March until November every year, wide open. Every single weekend we're out flying around. We go to El Centro, California to do our winter training. Um, for those of you that are football fans, my best analogy is like two a days. We fly all day, every day. We get about three months of, of winter training done there. Uh, it's just a great opportunity. The weather's nice. We get a lot of flying in. Uh, we'll start off flying one or two aircraft at a time, ultimately working up into a six ship delta formation, which is what we'll, you'll see during the demonstration. I work in life support. We maintain the systems that support the life of the pilot during normal and emergency situations, which include, which include the ejection seats, um, ECS and avionics cooling, all the survival equipment, seat pan, anything that the pilot would, would uh, need necessarily in a worst case scenario is the equipment that we work on. John Hecker, uh, J-O-H-N-H-E-C-K-E-R. Uh, I'm a captain of the United States Marine Corps and I fly uh, Fat Albert for the United States Navy Blue Angels. Uh, I joined the uh, military when I was 29 years old, which is two and a half years after I'm allowed to be able to join it in the first place, so I had to get an age waiver. Uh, I never flew until I was 30 years old and then uh, uh, I started uh, flight school and uh, learned to fly at age 30. Uh, and 10 years later, here I am flying Fat Albert for, uh, for all the great people in the States. So, uh, having an absolute blast doing this. You know, we, we get to come out here to places like this and, and put on a show with all these other great performers. You know, we got uh, Mike Whiskas with us, we got uh, uh, Chuck Aaron, uh, we got the U.S. Navy Lead Frog, we got all these great people coming out uh, this weekend to put on a show for everybody here. Uh, and it's going to be a blast. But uh, you could pretty much take anybody from the fleet and you could put them in this job and you can make it happen. Uh, it's just a matter of training and everything. And, uh, you know, they're out there on the front lines right now. We just happen to be the, uh, the face uh, of the Navy and the Marine Corps and we're out here uh, showing Americans uh, up close and personal wise what we do uh, as sailors and Marines. You know, it, a normal uh, American doesn't get to go out and touch an aircraft carrier. They don't get to go out and touch an airplane. They don't get to be this close to the action. Uh, and everything we do at the air show is kind of, uh, you know, basically what we're doing in Iraq or Afghanistan or, or overseas, other places. Uh, except we're kind of making it a little bit more showy, obviously, and we got our, our jets painted up blue and yellow. But uh, basically, it's just a great opportunity for Americans to come out and see what we do. The Blue Angels proudly celebrate the centennial of Marine Corps aviation. In May of 1912, First Lieutenant Alfred Cunningham reported to Annapolis, Maryland for flight training, marking the birth of Marine Corps aviation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Your United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron takes pleasure in performing for you. This, our 53rd flight demonstration of the 2012 season. I am Lieutenant Mark Tedro, narrator for the Blue Angels. The Blue Angel maintenance crew and their equipment travel aboard a United States Marine Corps C-130 Hercules, affectionately known as Fat Albert. It is the large blue and white aircraft taking its position on the runway to your left. Today, Fat Albert will be demonstrating the high performance climb capability of the Lockheed Martin C-130 Hercules. First, oh, up to the winter calm. We own the airfield and airspace. You are clear to take off. Have a good one. Thanks, Mo. First ready to do it one more time in the paradise of the Pacific at Marine Corps Base, Hawaii. Uh, Marine Corps, zip submarine. The C-130 Hercules, built by the Lockheed Martin Aircraft Company, was first produced in 1951. It was designed as a tactical transport, capable of lifting heavy payloads both into and out of short or unimproved airstrips, as well as providing aerial delivery. The aircraft is powered by four Rolls-Royce turboprop engines, producing more than 18,000 shaft horsepower, enabling takeoffs on runways as short as 2,500 feet. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Hecker is now positioning Fat Albert behind the crowd to the right for the parade pass. Flown at 200 feet, at airspeeds approaching 300 miles per hour. From the right, Captain Hecker is now positioning Fat Albert for a low altitude high speed pass. From the left, at 370 miles per hour, the Fat Albert Flat Pass. Fat Albert is flown by an all-Marine crew, led by Captain Ben Blinn from Ventura, California, Captain John Hecker from Huntsville, Alabama, and Captain A.J. Harrell from Frederick, Maryland. 
Eye into the left. Captain Hecker will establish Fat Albert on a very steep approach angle to simulate landing in mountainous terrain or a hostile environment. To demonstrate the short field landing capability, they will touch down and immediately reposition the propellers to full reverse, stopping the aircraft in just 1,500 feet. You will notice that not only can the aircraft stop quickly, but it can actually taxi backwards. Ladies and gentlemen, with the stars and stripes flying proudly above the cockpit, the Blue Angel C-130. Fat Albert. Now, direct your attention to the ramp before you. Observe the military manner in which the six demonstration pilots approach their aircraft and are saluted by their crew chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, Flying Blue Angel number one, the commanding officer and flight leader of the Blue Angels from Atlanta, Georgia, Captain Greg McWhirter. Flying Blue Angel number two, the right wingman from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, Lieutenant Commander John Hiltz. Flying Blue Angel number three, the left wingman and one of the Marine Corps representatives in the Delta Formation from Hemet, California, Captain Brandon Cordell. Flying Blue Angel number four, the slot pilot and the other Marine Corps representative in the Delta Formation from Knoxville, Tennessee, Major Brent Stevens. Flying Blue Angel number five, the lead solo from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, Lieutenant Commander CJ Simonson. Flying Blue Angel number six, the opposing solo from Birmingham, Alabama, Lieutenant Commander Dave Tickle. As the crew chiefs assist the pilots into their jets, you are witnessing the teamwork found in all Navy and Marine Corps units. The Blue Angels also take a great deal of pride in personifying the Navy and Marine Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment. The Navy's Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, is the oldest performing U.S. military aviation demonstration team. Since 1946, the Blue Angels have brought naval aviation to men and women of all ages across America. We are now in our 26th year of flying the highly sophisticated Boeing F-A-18 Hornet. The pilots and crew chiefs will now start the General Electric engines that power these F-A-18s. The noise level will soon become too high for you to hear a description of the checks that we will be performing. However, please note that each aircraft was carefully inspected by expert Blue Angel maintenance personnel prior to this afternoon's aerial demonstration. The Blue Angels fly the Boeing F-A-18 Hornet a multi-mission strike fighter, versions of which have been operational throughout the fleet since 1983. in tight formation, just as you will see them perform here this afternoon. This degree of precision has become a trademark of the Blue Angels since first established 66 years ago. 16 officers and 100 enlisted personnel comprise the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron. Four of the demonstration pilots fly in a tight diamond formation, while two fly as solos, the maximum performance demonstrators. Once again, I am Lieutenant Mark Tedro from Shalroy, Pennsylvania, Blue Angel number seven and the narrator for the flight demonstration as well as the pilot for the VIPs we normally fly at each show's site. They're on the runway now with the diamond establishing the fingertip formation. They'll accelerate their engines to 85% power, carefully check their engine instruments, and respond to Captain McWhirter with a thumbs up, indicating they're ready to go. 
With a thumbs up from each of his wingmen, Captain McWord will call for the selection of afterburner, and the Blue Angel Diamond will be rolling. Accelerating to 150 miles per hour, he will pull back on the stick, flying the formation into the air. Immediately after liftoff, Major Stevens will call for the landing gear and flaps to come up, and they'll commence the diamond burner go, low transition on takeoff. Four, four, up steady winds are 1107. We are on the airfield and airspace. You are cleared for takeoff. Have a good one. Thanks, bro. Take off, wind zone 1107. That's a right crosswind. Check your parking brake off. Check your trap set. Check your nozzle steering on maneuver. Diamond burner go. Low transition. Right turn out. Check a. Two phase. Diamond up clear on nine. Let's fire it up for the blues over K Bay and 100 years of Marine Corps aviation. Let's run them up. Back to the right, Blue Angel number five is rolling. He will accelerate to 170 miles per hour and climb to an altitude of 50 feet. He will then roll his aircraft 360 degrees with the landing gear extended. The dirty roll on takeoff. Back to the left, Blue Angel number six is rolling. He will execute a very precise low transition as he accelerates his aircraft to 300 miles per hour. The Blue Angel Diamond will momentarily be making its approach from the right. In relatively slow speed flight, they will give you an opportunity to get a close look at that very minimum 18 inch wingtip to canopy separation that exists between these four aircraft. Approaching center point, Lieutenant Commander Simonson and Lieutenant Commander Tickle will roll their aircraft into a 90 degree angle of bank and push forward on the stick as they perform the opposing knife edge pass. From the right, at 400 miles per hour, the diamond roll. All four aircraft rolling as one in this graceful 360 degree rolling maneuver. Our two solo pilots are approaching once again, this time to demonstrate the inverted flight capabilities of these FA-18s. Approaching inverted from the left and right, they will roll their aircraft 360 degrees over center point. The opposing inverted to inverted roll. To the left, the diamond is setting up for their next maneuver the diamond aileron roll. Approaching center point on a signal from Captain McWhorter, all four pilots will simultaneously roll their aircraft 360 degrees. To the right, Lieutenant Commander Simonson and Lieutenant Commander Tickle will establish a mirror image formation. But look closely, for both aircraft are in the carrier landing configuration as they approach for a maneuver we call the Fortas. For Navy and Marine Corps pilots who must land their aircraft on the small and sometimes pitching deck of an aircraft carrier at sea, slow speed flight is just as important as high speed flight. In order to demonstrate the dirty slow speed handling characteristics of these Boeing FA-18s, Captain McWhorter has called for the extension of a landing gear and tail hooks by the four Diamond pilots. As the four Diamond pilots approach once again, you should notice two significant modifications. While the wingmen, Lieutenant Commander Hiltz and Captain Cordill, maintain that minimum wingtip to canopy separation, the flight leader and slot pilot are both upside down. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Simonson is approaching to demonstrate the maximum performance turn radius of the FA-18. He'll execute a seven and a half G after burning turn and exit the flight line vertically, showcasing the Hornet's slow speed climb capability.
having rolled their aircraft 270 degrees and crossed with minimum separation. Let's watch as both pilots sustain six times the force of gravity required to cross their aircraft over center point. The four Diamond pilots are now stacked down and aft on a 45 degree bearing line to establish a right echelon formation. From the right, at 350 miles per hour, the Blue Angel Echelon Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposing horizontal rolls. In front of the crowd to the right, Captain McWhorter is rolling out the diamond to demonstrate the awesome power of these General Electric engines. Approaching center point, he will call the four diamond pilots to select full afterburner. Watch and listen to the thunder of eight engines, producing 128,000 pounds of thrust. More power than the starting lineup of the Daytona 500. To the right, Lieutenant Commander Simonson has joined the Diamond in a line of breast formation. Still maintaining minimum separation, the pilots must now align themselves by looking 90 degrees from their flight path toward Captain McWhorter's aircraft. Approaching from the right at 350 miles per hour, the five plane line of breast flat pass. Captain McWhorter has now called for our two solo pilots to join the Diamond for the Delta aerobatic portion of our flight demonstration. From the left, at 400 miles per hour, the Blue Angel Maneuvering Delta. 